Good morning students. Today's topic is Kohlrausch's law and its applications. Okay, so electrolytes are of two types, strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. Strong electrolytes get dissociates completely. So we can easily calculate the um, uh, limiting molar conductivity of strong electrolytes. But in the case of weak electrolytes, uh, at infinite dilution, the molar conductivity can be calculated, but it is not accurate. So, we are using a new method called Kohlrausch's law to calculate the limiting molar conductivity of weak electrolytes. Now, what is Kohlrausch's law? Kohlrausch's law states that an electrolyte's limiting molar conductivity is equal to the sum of the individual limiting molar conductivities of the cations and anions that make up the electrolyte. Okay. So, it states that the limiting molar conductivity, the limiting molar conductivity of an electrolyte, okay. is equal to the sum of the limiting molar conductivities limiting molar conductivities of cations and anions so, sum of the limiting molar conductivities of cations and the limiting molar conductivities of the anions that make up the electrolyte. That make up the electrolyte. Okay. This is called as Kohlrausch's law. So, by using this, we can accurately calculate the limiting molar conductivity of weak electrolytes. Okay. So, let so, for an electrolyte, let the electrolyte be AX, BY, okay, AX, BY, AX represent the positive, the positive ions and BY negative ions, okay. So, they get dissociated, AX, BY gets dissociates as X, A, Y plus, plus Y, B, x minus like this it gets dissociates okay now next molar conductivity limiting molar conductivity of ax by will be equal to x times molar conductivity of a y plus and and sum of the y lambda zero of b x minus okay so sum of the uh, limiting molar conductivity of cation and sum of the limiting molar conductivity of anions. Like this we can calculate or we can write lambda 0 ax by will be equal to x lambda 0, lambda 0 positive ion. Okay, limiting molar conductivity of positive ion plus y limiting molar conductivity of negative ion like this okay so here a represents cation and b represents anion like this okay where lambda 0 of a and lambda 0 of b are the ionic conductances of a y plus that is the cation and b x minus of electrolyte a x b y at infinite dilution okay so that is lambda 0 a and lambda 0 b they are the ionic conductances, okay, ionic conductances of electrolyte AXBY, okay, at infinite dilution like this. Now, let us take one example by using the example, well, example is acetic acid, by taking acetic acid, we can explain this, okay. Acetic acid, example, CH3COH dissociates, 
CH3 COO minus plus H plus. Okay. This is uh, negative ion, anion and cation. Okay. Now, lambda 0 of CH3 COH will be equal to lambda 0 of CH3 COO minus plus lambda 0 of H plus like this. Okay. So, like all ratios law, sum of the uh, limiting molar conductivities of uh, anions and cations. Okay. Now, we are adding with lambda 0 of NaCl, limiting molar conductivity of NaCl and subtracting molar conductivity of NaCl like this. Okay. So, we can do like this. Now, what happens? This will be equal to lambda 0 of CH3 COO minus plus lambda 0 of H plus plus lambda 0 of Na plus and Cl minus. Na and Cl gets associates as Na plus and Cl minus plus lambda 0 of Cl minus minus lambda 0 of Na plus and minus lambda 0 of Cl minus. Like this we can write. Now we are rearranging. What happens? We can take this lambda 0 of Na plus here. So, lambda 0 of CH3 COO minus plus lambda 0 of Cl minus. Not Cl minus, Na plus. So, we can write this as CH3 COO Na. Now, like this. H plus plus lambda 0 of Cl minus minus lambda 0 of Na plus minus lambda 0 of Cl minus. By rearranging we can do like this. Now what happens? This will be equal to lambda 0 of CH3 COO Na. So here we can, this is a salt, a strong salt. Okay. Plus this gets converted into lambda 0 of HCl minus lambda 0 of NaCl. Like this we can rearrange. So by using this law, lambda 0 of CH3 COH can be calculated if we know the limiting molar conductivity of CH3 COO Na, limiting molar conductivity of HCl and limiting molar conductivity of NaCl. This is an important application of Kohlrausch's law. So, using this we can easily calculate the limiting molar conductivity of a weak electrolyte. Now, next we are discussing different applications of Kohlrausch's law. Next applications first application determination of limiting molar conductivity of weak electrolytes okay of weak electrolytes. Let us take another example NH4OH NH4OH dissociates like this NH4 plus and OH minus. Okay. Now taking molar conductivity lambda 0 of NH4OH equals molar conductivity of cation and anion. Okay. Now we are adding and subtracting NH4 uh, NaCl. Okay. NaCl lambda molar conductivity of NaCl dissociates as Na plus and Cl minus adding and subtracting. Now what happens? Adding and subtracting. Now we are rearranging this. So we will get NH4 plus rearranging. So NH4 plus and Cl minus. So NH4 Cl we will get plus lambda 0 of Na plus plus lambda 0 of OH minus minus lambda 0 of NH plus minus lambda 0 of Cl minus. Okay. Like this we will get. Now, this will get converted into lambda 0 of NH4 plus and Cl minus. So, NH4 Cl plus lambda 0 of NaOH minus lambda 0 of NaCl. Like this. We will get like this. So, if we know the limiting molar conductivity of NH4Cl, 
NaOH and NaCl. We will we can easily calculate the uh, molar conductivity, the limiting molar conductivity of a weak electrolyte like NH4OH. Okay, this is one application. Now, next application is determination of degree of dissociation and equilibrium constant of a weak electrode. How can we do this? Second, determination of determination of equilibrium constant and degree of dissociation alpha of degree of dissociation and equilibrium constant k equilibrium constant of a weak electrode how can we do weak electrode So, let us take an example CH3COH dissociates like this CH3CO minus plus H plus. Okay. Now, initial concentration C concentration 0, 0. Okay. Now, alpha is the degree of dissociation and equilibrium constant is K. C represents the initial concentration. Initially, no products are obtained. Okay. Now, after some time, the concentration gets converted into C minus C alpha. Okay. C minus C alpha. Alpha is the, the degree of dissociation. So, C alpha subtracted from the initial concentration. Here, C alpha, C alpha. Okay. Like this. Now, we know alpha is equal to molar conductivity by limiting molar conductivity okay like this limiting molar conductivity that is here the molar conductivity at concentration c molar conductivity at infinite dilution okay now k will be we know k is equal to concentration of products by concentration of reactants okay so what happens this will be Concentration of products will be C square alpha square C alpha into C alpha C square alpha square by C into 1 minus alpha or we can write C alpha square by 1 minus alpha ok. This will be the K ok. This will be K. Now we know alpha is lambda m by lambda 0 or we can write like this C alpha gets converted into lambda m by lambda mean limiting molar conductivity by 1 minus lambda m by lambda 0 ok. So, if we know lambda m and lambda 0 we can calculate the equilibrium constant like this ok square okay. like this. Like this these are the different applications of Carl Rasch's law. Now, let us do one problem based on this. First, the resistance of 0 0.01 molar acetic acid solution is given that is 2220, 2220 ohm and when measured in a cell of cell constant 0.366 centimeter inverse. Okay, given limiting molar conductivity of H plus and limiting molar conductivity CH3CO minus are given. That is 349.1 and 40.9. Calculate conductivity, molar conductivity, degree of dissociation and dissociation constant. Conductivity is kappa. Okay. Molar conductivity, we know lambda m. Okay. Then molar conductivity, then degree of dissociation. Degree of dissociation alpha and dissociation constant k. Okay. All this we have to find. First conductivity. Kappa is equal to kappa we already studied L by A 1 by R into L by A that is 1 by R into cell constant L by A is cell constant or cell constant by R ok. Cell constant is given 0 0.366 R is 220 2220 ohm. Okay. 
So we will get the answer 1.648 into 10 is to minus 4 s centimeter minus 1. Yes. Kappa conductivity is given. So we calculate conductivity. Now next molar conductivity. Molar conductivity. Molar conductivity can be calculated from kappa. We know kappa conductivity into conductivity into thousand by molarity. We already discussed earlier. Okay. This will be molar conductivity. So kappa we know 1.648 into 10 raised to minus 4 into thousand by point zero 0.01 molarity. Okay. What will be the answer? 16.48. 16.48 yes centimeter square mole raised to minus 1 this is molar conductivity ok now next limiting molar conductivity are given so how can we calculate degree of dissociation degree of dissociation alpha equal lambda m by limiting molar conductivity ok so of acetic acid by Kohlrausch's law we know molar conductivity of acetic acid is equal to limiting molar conductivity of CH3COO CO minus plus limiting molar conductivity of H plus they are given 349.1 plus 40.9 okay it is given now the answer is 390 yes m square mol raised to minus 1 okay centimeter square now what is alpha is equal to molar conductivity molar conductivity already calculated 16.48 by 390 so the answer 0 0.0422 okay now next we have to calculate degree of sorry dissociation constant we have to calculate okay So, dissociation constant is Ka. Ka we know C alpha square by 1 minus alpha. Okay. Or we can write uh, 1 minus alpha. Alpha is uh, very very small. So, we can neglect this value. So, this is equal to C alpha square. We can calculate like this. That is C is given 0 0.01. Concentration is given 0, 0 0.01 molar CH3COH and we already calculated alpha. Alpha is 0 0.0422 square. Okay. So the answer will be 1.78 into 10 raised to minus 5. It's a constant, so no unit. So dissociation constant also we calculated. This much about Kohlrausch's law and its application, and we already discussed a problem based on this. Okay.